uh, can you show us your more precious items in your collection? Uh, I think for me, um, items, I mean, I mean, these are two items that we did for the group. Yeah. This is the, uh, the McGee print with, uh, with, with um, Brian Cannon of the King Tips Night. That was a nice one. And the, the one that David noted out there, the Nebworth one, which I've had mounted with the, the, with the, uh, the passes, that was a good one. Uh, key key items. I'll just go around the room. I mean, this to me is one of the best, Amazing. most sought after items that you can get. And That's... the amount of these that are just sat in a cardboard box behind. I mean, this was sat behind my desk for years, years. I thought, you know, it needs to be. It needs to be displayed better. So it cost me a fortune to to mount it and hang it. But it's a uh, yeah. And the stop the clocks dartboard was beautiful. Beautiful. Um, I mean, I've got drumsticks and drumskins were a big thing for me for a good while. Um, I really like in, uh, picking up these things. My best item is a drumskin signed by every single past member yeah. by a bonehead. Mm. Yeah. It's currently away being signed by a bonehead. Ooh. When that comes back, I'll have that. And um, But these these drumskins, you can see in the back there, there's a fair few more. I've just become a bit obsessed with these over the last couple of years. Ooh. But to go through the eras is, 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 is cool. Uh, my little cabinet up here is uh, <coughs> is um, something that I quite enjoy adding to the Vox box. Again, Amazing. the back of that is signed by all the band members except for Bonehead and Liam. Again, it's a way of being signed by Bonehead at the moment, so that'd be quite cool. Um, the definitely maybe promo CD there from back in the day, the black one. There's a lot of fakes in these about, but they're quite. Um, they're quite easy to spot if you know what you're looking for. Yeah. B&O is always my clue. B&O on Bonehead. Um, yeah. uh, a few things in here that this bus here is pretty bloody rare. Um, I was never bothered about this at all. But when I got offered one, I just had to take it. And then I had to get Whitey to sign the top of it just to make it even more special. Oh, cool. Uh, that at the back there is the master plan 10-inch box set, but this is the test press, one-off, white label test press. That's that's written on the plastic there. That's not on the actual item. Um, some Whitfield Street recordings here of the albums and itinerary. These are Liam's Maracas from his Manchester gig in 2018. Oh. Uh, this is the master tape for the CD release of Standing on the Shoulder of the Giants. I think that was, again, yeah, signed by Whitey. Great. Uh, tambourine used on Oasis tour by Liam. Um, cool. 2000, he's another Liam solo Maracas. tour, yeah. Maracas, yeah. Uh, BDI a bit there. I, I'm also a massive fan of the Verve and Seahorses, by the way. Massive fan of them, so uh, I have a lot of Verve stuff, a oh. lot of Seahorses. Um, I like this sort of stuff the uh, the um, artist proof, you know, the uh, the signed artist proof. Yeah. These these items are cool, these are all right. Um, Tickets and passes I've got into over the last couple of years. This was a coffee table I saw in IKEA mm. for 180 quid. And as soon as I saw it, I thought that would look really cool with yeah. tickets and passes in it. So I've kind of segregated it. So this this is like the early early years. You know, there's like a 1993 to 1996 mm. tickets in there. A lot Lomond set list buried underneath there. This is the Nebworth corner with a few 96 and 97 gigs in it. Yeah. Uh, again, Nebworth set list in there, a few signed tickets and passes and MTV unplugged. Uh, and then we move down to this one, like 10 years and I was in confusion. And again, a set list from each of those gigs there. Cool. Cool. Um, and the last one, which was the important gig, where I, my last one with them was the uh, Eaton Park. So two set lists from Eaton Park and a few from City of Manchester Stadium in 05. Yeah, there were uh, cool, cool items there. I'm not going to go into the detail with the vinyl, but I, we we talked about promos before. A real, I mean, this is beautiful oh, uh, as, as a cover for a promo. It's amazing, but the important ones really. Everyone thinks about Walrus as being the most important yeah. promo, but yeah, yeah, yeah. as you mentioned earlier on, things like this one, stop the clocks. Yeah. Try and find that. You're really going to struggle to find that. You'll really struggle to find it. Um, and can you see it now? Also, really. Yeah. Really hard one to find. The um, there's a Nebuff box set, beautiful, came out today. Oh. Um, the the, the 94 the Virgin Megastore 
definitely maybe it's just mm. beautiful. You know, they're so yeah. they're so different. Yeah. These, these are two I've tried to get for my boys. So this is a definitely maybe that I've tried to get for my, my son Charlie. Just signed by everybody to him. So yeah, you know, when cool. he gets older. Cool. And the same again to Taylor, my other son. When they get older, if they like Oasis, I can go, yeah, boys, have a bit of that. And they'll uh, hopefully be happy. But I think we all know they're going to end up liking the spy skills or something, aren't they? <laughs> um, uh, this one is a Q Awards uh, program, which was signed by um, On the Night by Liam, uh, by Noel, uh, Bono from U2, all the winners, really. Um, oh. Rod Stewart, Brian Eno, uh, Elvis Costello, and then weirdly, Mark Owen and Mark Owen. Mark Owen signed it twice. Whatever is my favourite Oasis tune, as yeah, much as it may be a cover, cool. it's, it's, uh, it's my favourite tune. Um, so I got this off, off, I bought this off Tony way back. And oh, to great. John, I was a nice one. This this last one here was a bit of a, uh, a random find recently. Um, a supernova signed by the whole band in 2005 and it was just it, it, it appeared in a mate of mine's record shop and um it had been sat in a in a a bar in Magaluf for 20 20 years and um <laughs> it was a bit roughed up and the guy didn't accept a low ball offer for it but I had to get it I had to get that one yeah yeah and uh, over to this side you've got a supersonic sign promo print there or vinyl. I think this is the last little bit. This is from the Pretty Green store. This is oh. uh, one of the schools that oh. Liam signed. Oh. But yeah, I mean that's the way. I, that's the way I tend to work. I tend to have it all in one one little space. And yeah, um, talking Holy Grails, you know, Walrus, Walrus, yeah, yeah. Columbia, yeah, uh, the first demo. You know, I the think first... six hundred copies of Columbia, two hundred and fifty of Walrus. You know, pretty good. Amazing. Um, same as Kyle, the definitely maybe promo CD there. Uh, nice one to have to go along with the, the definitely maybe launch day vinyl from Virgin Megastore there. Yeah, you can you've got to that probably. <coughs> totally, yeah, Amazing. yeah, nice one. That, uh, I think I'm, I'm fairly unique in having a, a reissue copy signed by everyone. Oh, uh, the, the original five all got on there. Uh, when we met Gwigs, that was the the icing on the cake. You know, we managed to get Gwigs on this one, so oh, you know, yeah. absolutely delighted with that. Yeah. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, singles box set signed by Nola. Oh, yeah. I think that's around 96, 97, That kind of signature. Uh, uh the good old medals box set there. Oh, that's you can't, cool. you can't beat it, can you? It's it's yeah. a beautiful thing. Beautiful. I've got I've got number one hundred and nine. If you can see that somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, so yeah, pretty good. That I think there were what two thousand made. Kyle, is that correct? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, something like that. We don't care about numbers, or do we? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we're not. We're not competitive. <laughs> uh. It's a very rare one, this. Uh, familiar to Millions. Signed. Signed by everybody. Um, you know, it's pretty well, difficult to get hold of those yeah, for yeah. decent prices these anyway. But, yeah, signed copy, very cool, you know. Um, I, don't, I don't think I've, I've seen another one of those, so cool. quite proud of that one. Uh, familiar to Millions DVD, mm -hmm. the inlay all signed by the band there. Cool. Uh, you can see a theme here, a few autographs here and there. Uh, Columbia promo, 2004, signed by Liam and Noel. Cool. Uh, uh, my my generation signed by Noel. Great. And that's that's pretty rare as well. I don't. Yeah. Very rare that you see my generation signed by anyone. Yeah. Uh, Turn up the sun with all the lyrics written by Andy Bell. Yeah, that's amazing. I saw that. Amazing. Yeah, that was that was down to Eric. You know, Eric has that amazing relationship with Andy Bell. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that really opened doors. You know, I, th I think your Lord Don't Slow Me Down, Kyle, I think that came from Eric as well, didn't it? 
Yeah. Yeah, well, I'll, through that link, I've managed to get a BDI. The BDI two albums with lyrics on from Andy. You, you, you sometimes meet people like Eric and they're like the geese with golden eggs, aren't they? You've got to kind of you know, get what you can right, when, when, they're, when they're selling because yeah, exactly. you, know, you won't see another one again, ever. Exactly, yeah. You've got to grab it where you can, basically. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Stop the Clock, signed by Loads, uh, signed by Liam, Andy, Gwigs. Uh, let me yeah. check. <laughs> game. Game. Alan, Alan White in game, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and as you do, I've got I've got two copies that was signed by Noel and yeah. Gem. If you can, yeah, yeah, yeah. see that probably. Yep, uh, it's quite a, a rare one. Big out oh, your soul, signed by the whole band there. Cool. Um, I think I think around that time they weren't too keen on signing anything or talking to fans because they were pretty much going their own way, you know. Yeah. Uh. BDI, got the roller there and different ge- different gear, still speeding, all signed by the band. Uh, and B as well, that was Ooh. that was signed in person at uh, HMV in Glasgow. I was lucky to just get in the queue and I basically bunked off work, said I had a dental appointment <laughs> and drew up the uh, drove up the the motorway like an absolute madman and got the last vinyl copy in HMV. Um and next thing I was in the queue and yeah met them all it was really cool. Oh, this this will make Kyle a bit jealous. The Dublin poster. Just get out of town. Yeah, <laughs> it's a bit personal. That. <laughs> it's a low blow. Uh, uh, backstage pass from MTV Unplugged. Liam Gallagher actually belonged to Liam Gallagher. That cool. Mm. That was his actual pass. So that's a nice one to have. Uh. Let's see, what else do I? (laughs) Uh, Dressing room sign from Noel Gallagher's gig at the York Theatre in London. You know, I I, I love that, all that kind of backstage stuff. So, yeah, it's a cool one. Um, Noel's latest best of signed outside his studio in King's Cross. Yeah. You're probably getting a bit bored now, but anyway, I'm going to keep no, going. No, no. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, what's the story of Morning Glory? Signed by Noel. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, uh, sorry, gents. Uh, set list signed by Noel. 2012, that was his arena sound check set list. Yeah, it's a good one. Oh. Uh, I think I may have... Oh, no, sorry. Uh the good oh, old Epiphone there. Yeah. I may have been done and pulled out a golden wonder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, here's the one that I forgot. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, signed by Noel for me in Edinburgh, you know, that was amazing, amazing. meeting the guy. And, yeah. Yeah, he was, he, was, he was great as well, you know, just really very <laughs> personable and, you know, they say don't meet your heroes, but that was a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, Epiphone. Uh, sh- uh, what am I saying? No, that's uh, a Les Paul. Um, yeah. So I, I loved his guitar at Familiar to Millions of gigs. You know, very, yeah. you know, I love that Cherry Sunburst. I, I had one of these ages ago and couldn't play it very well, but had a go, you know, as, as you do, and was in a band for a while and then had to sell it to get my, my uh, girlfriend at the time an engagement ring. Big mistake, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um but but managing to get this one you know later on with it signed by noel as well you know wonderful oh, so, yeah 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 Amazing. yeah so pretty happy with that hey guys uh next question how do you think the market for oasis collecting has changed over the years um i think if i can yeah. answer this one um it's it's really gone up you know i think it's continued yeah. to really appreciate i think since the supersonic documentary um suddenly through the the light the light the spotlight back on the band and suddenly everyone remembered and appreciated what was great about them um i think their legend has just continued to, to rise and as a result all of the items that go with it all the memories all the memorabilia that continues to go up in value so i don't know i think i think the sky's the limit i think it's only going to continue to do that 
Yeah. I think Noel at the very start of this, but as soon as he started, the, the second he started, he had it in his mind of where it was going to go, what it was going to be as a band, and how it was going to be. He was a Beatles fan. He was a fan of big bands. Yeah. I think putting promos out there, putting promos out as a start was a big deal because he knew people would collect this sort of stuff. He knew for the fact they would collect it. Exactly. Different versions of everything. People collect everything. And it is, it is the way, if you're a fan of a band, I know sometimes collectors can be a bit of a pain in the ass, actually. They can be annoying. Um, um, David's annoying, so yeah, I can understand that. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it can be that way. But, I mean, when, when you look around, like my, my missus and friends look in this room and think, well, what's up with you? You're weird. But well, this is my thing. You know, I enjoy watching Man City play, but I don't go to other games. I don't go to the pub every weekend. I enjoy collecting this sort yeah. of stuff. And it's not just the way it is, it's general music stuff. So certain things is just going to go like that in volume. Okay. And oh. how, do, how do you notice if an item is true or fake? Have you had a bad um, experience about that? Yeah, I think everybody has. I think everybody yeah. has. Absolutely. Sorry. Just, just, Sorry. just kidding. Yeah, yeah. Every, everyone makes mistakes, you know, I think early on in their yeah. collecting, you know, I think they, um, <laughs> but I think um, as time goes on, you, you you learn more, you you have more people to check with, you know, there's, that's one of the great things about the group, you know, so many experts that you can, you can go <laughs> to and, and they'll immediately give you a, give you a really positive reaction or a, or a really negative reaction. <laughs> there's, there's, Usually not uh, an in between is there. I don't go. Well, that was that was part, that was part of the reason again of setting it up because a, a lot of people were asking me if things are real or fake, yeah. and no, yeah. nobody's ever, nobody is ever a solid expert on this. Nobody ever knows exactly. We bounce ideas off each other quite often. Well, yeah, since yeah. I find with the Oasis collectors is, if someone sees something on eBay and they fancy it. It's a risky game putting it on somewhere and saying, Do you think this is real? Because then you're highlighting that item to people. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it'll go very, very quickly. So you've got to kind of play the game a bit. But I, I did a thread a while back where I just said, Can we all post pictures of things you've got and just say, You got it in person and what year it was? And I'm going to make like a kind of like a cheat sheet of each, each because the thing with the Oasis is, <laughs> other than Bonehead and Sony, a lot of the signatures have changed quite a bit, especially Noel and Liam. No, yeah, have changed yeah, quite yeah. a bit over the years. So, it, you know, the amount of times people say, oh, this is real. And you know what I really hate? I hate it when new people join a group and they're really enthusiastic and really happy and they post their pride item. I've had this for years and blah, and they post it and it's fake. And you think, oh, man, you know, that's, yeah. that's the reason why I think the group is really valuable. But if somebody posts something, no one will ever say that's dog shit. That's awful. If they say, "Is this real?" You'll get an opinion. Yeah. But um, you'll never get anybody having a pop at you, having a go. But the fact, the best thing you can do is say, "Is this real?" Because you know, I'd rather people know something's rubbish. I don't think there is an item that could be decided upon wrong in this group. Now there is that many people in there that can give a solid opinion. It's probably mm -hmm. the solid ten people, but then there's another 200 that will give a proper educated opinion as well. And I think that really matters. And I think I, I, there's no one in the group, no one that has not bought something fake or sold something fake. I'm, I'm having none of it. I think everybody's done it in the past, but you just learn from it. You get something you think, oh God, how did I not realise that was fake two years ago or yeah. three years ago? But then uh, but you, you might then have sold it on in a deal or something. And you think, oh my, I feel, I feel awful now. But well, that's just the way it works, you know, and that's that. Again, 50% yeah. of the reason why I thought if we set this up and have this little hub that people could spot the snides, you know, but we'll see. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Okay. So I think we've we've developed a good a good kind of bank of um expertise that you know there's there's stuff that is really blatantly fake, you know, like sheet music is a prime example, you know, it's quite often just taken out of a music book or even photocopied, um, signed by, you know, some really cynical people, um, you know, and, and that's just like very low cost items and, you know, that they, they can reproduce them in bulk. Yeah. And, you know, that, that's, that's a giveaway quite often, you know, and there's, there's loads of telltale signs, you know, um, there's loads of, 
really obvious things, you know, and, and there's some terrible signatures out there, you know, which you you, you start to <laughs> spot immediately after a while, you know. So much detail of that, I think that's quite important to put out there. But um, yeah, exactly what you just said there. If it's a CD cover, or if it's a printed out music sheet, or, or a printed out picture, it's very easy to print it. I have a crack at it and go, oh, that's shit, that. And print another one. Just try again. Keep trying again. Yeah, it's costing you yeah, to yeah. do it. So, so they're the items. And to be honest with you, if you get a print, a signed print or a signed music sheet, it's not it's not great anyway, really. It's not something you can really show off. It's not yeah. something that's like a prime. So I, I, I personally stay away from all of those things. Anyway, even if they're real, I just think, well, it's not that great. But if it's even things like records, vinyl, you think it's quite expensive to buy it now. But it wasn't expensive to buy at one stage within the last 20 years. Exactly. Vinyl was like the vinyl was massive. And then when the CD came in, CD was massive and vinyl went boom, see you yeah. later. Yeah. And suddenly you can buy vinyl for a quid. You could get Oasis vinyl for four pounds on eBay. So then it became something that if you wrecked it, it wasn't that bad. So there was maybe three or four years where a lot of vinyl was signed by the full band. Me personally, I always look for a few for a few tips. If everything's signed in a different colour pen, I automatically think, oh, how would when would that happen? Really, when yeah. would that happen? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You don't meet every band, you, you meet a few. And also, you know, uh, everybody focuses on Liam and Noel always. They always focus on Liam, and then the other ones kind of go by the way by. But, you know, there's some real obvious pointers on like Bonehead and Tony that, that look at them first. I always look at Bonehead and Tony first, always. Because they're the ones that are very simple and easy to do. But mm-hmm. if you mess them up, you can spot it out a mile away. So it's, I just think, and again, everything I've, everything I've just said there, I didn't know two years ago when I set the group up. When you get all these people coming together and giving you tips and hints and things to look for, yeah. it really uh, really um, helps you. And I yeah. think, uh, like I say, no one's innocent. I've, I've definitely sold stuff on eBay four or five years ago. But I now know, oh, that wasn't real. You know, but it's the way the world turns, you know what I mean? Um, guys, uh, what is the Oasis item uh, that was really hard to get and why? Uh, for me, I, I think I touched on it earlier, the definitely maybe reissue, I think, getting the, the five original members, you know, to sign that and getting Gwigzy as the, the last piece in the puzzle, you know, that was that was really special for me, you know. I think... Um, You know that's that's hard to come by. Um, I think you know it's quite easy. I think well, in in some respects, not not at the moment, but you can get no signed on things quite, you know, quite often. But you know, getting the getting all five on it is is difficult. Um, and yeah, I, th- I think I said earlier. I think I think I'm the first person to have done that. So with the reissue copy, um, and that and that familiar to millions. You know, that's yeah. I don't think anyone's got anything like that at all. So amazing. That's the, I think that's the key difference to me and David, I guess. David's all about the signatures, definitely. I remember that day we we literally bumped into Gwigs. You could not have made it up. And him I, after all the stuff we got signed, time flies, stop the clocks, the medals. Yeah. Just had these things on us because we we're doing something else at the same time. But it was that reissue that he was I remember him still at the train stage looking at it. I was like, ah, you You love that, don't you? <laughs> that was a big deal. <laughs> and familiar to millions was 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 a purchase, but pure jealousy. When he got that, I was yeah. like, oh my god. I mean, my familiar to millions is signed by Gem and Whitey that I've got myself, and that's it. So when he got that, all signed in the same color pen and perfect. I was like, shit, you know. Uh, for me, <laughs> it's 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 items for me. It's not. I love signatures, but signatures again, like tickets and passes. And things on the wall is all new for me. It was always vinyl and items, so yeah. I mean, um, it's a hard one. I mean, I've got the master plan box set. I've got I've got that fully signed by everybody and the test press. That's a cool, a cool one. I've got some things from abroad. I mean, I've got I've got a lot of things from abroad that I've not gone hunted. You know, I've got tambourines that Liam used on stage in American tours. Uh, the maracas that I've got from the, with with the red band on them. They're from Uh, Amsterdam. Um, I, I think that's a good tip. If somebody gets, in fact, I'll oh, we'll leave that. <laughs> Keep that to yourself. <laughs> I think if somebody gets given something abroad, um, you know, 
they'll they'll tend to sell it. It's quite a quite a good tip. They'll tend to is you know if the average fan gets something yeah. special, they don't really if they're not a collector of music memorabilia, they'll tend to sell it. Yep. So that's one thing I've done over the years is watch out for who gets given stuff that doesn't seem that bothered about it. Exactly. And they'll, they'll love it. They'll love it. <clears throat> they'll adore it for a week. And then they'll get put on a shelf and forgotten about. And that's yeah. how you end up with things like Stasis Maracas for a couple of hundred quid. Because you just think, well, I'll, I'll make them an offer and we'll see how it goes. And uh, I mean, that single sentence there, I just shot myself in the foot with a few future items. So, cricket. Okay, so this is the last question, guys. Um, what do you think are the top five Oasis memorabilia <clears throat> items that are most expensive in the market these days? What, what do you think, David? Top, top one. It can't, if you think about it, I don't think it can be a vinyl. Like I would, I'm automatically thinking the 94 Virgin, but you can get that for a grand to a grand and a half, so it can't be that. Yeah. That'll be number three. Um, oh, God, what's a couple of grand? I mean, we've had a big week here where you've just seen that the Liam used tambourine at Rockfield sell for 3,600. Yeah. We're, we're nearly five grand with the pre-bind cream on it. Then you've had the piano, which didn't sell, but did get bid up to 15 grand. Yeah. So it depends what you're looking at, really. If you're looking at instruments and stuff like that, that's that's a that's a big league. That, that's, that's proper Premier League. Yeah. If you're looking down to kind of a, you know, championship, Yeah, well, a, a original instruments that were used on, like definitely maybe in what's the story, Morning Glory. That's that's definitely a, a an expensive market to get into. Um, I, I suppose like the Vox Box is, you know, that's that's always going up in value. They're they're increasingly rare, and yeah, you're talking maybe a grand, what fifteen hundred maybe tops. Um, but you know, it's it's still a very sought after item. Uh, the the medals box as well. That's that's continuing to take on value, isn't it? And yeah. the Japanese yeah. box singles could be right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, right. Again, again, you're talking about CDs here with, with two guys that look at vinyl, so it's uh, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's different. But I mean, the black the black one on the group, the blacks the black box set has, has sold like I think twice on the group in the last month. Yeah. I've seen mm -hmm. two people buy it in the last month. I've never hunted it. I've never wanted it, and and maybe I should, but I don't. It, like I say, that's the best thing about it. People have their own little images of what they like and what they want to do, and CDs. Just I don't know what it is because it's it, CDs are fantastic and they're great, and there's so many variants. It's just not for me. So um, yeah, when I see these things come up, I'm like, wow, that is cool. Well, the Vox box is a CD item. Yeah. It's a bit different because it's a it's a wooden box and it's something special and it's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. the, uh, the the Alessia jar from the um, the What's the Story um, um, launch party. There was an Alessia jar given yeah. out that had the balls yeah, yeah, yeah. inside, and they could it. but it's it, it's so easy to get one that's not real because they still sell the jar yeah. on the website. You, know, you yeah, can go yeah. buy it quickly. The way you spot a real one is in the balls. Yeah, <laughs> is, exactly. Uh, yeah. Ah, but the way you spot it is the balls that are inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and the fact that it's aged, you know, if you buy one shiny and brand new, it's not, it's not real. But Sorry. I've, I've got a creation employee uh, that's, uh, that's real. But could I prove it's real? No. But would I be selling it? Doesn't matter. So yeah, yeah. Um, they're, they're the one, the, the items that I think are pretty special. If anything's, if anything's limited to less than 50, it's up there. Yeah. Simple. Whether it's a vinyl, a CD, a pro, whatever it is, it's up there. 